Hello, this is Adam Rayner for Mounted and Stuffed TV. And today I'm at the Tillingbourne Trout Farm and Smoker. You're looking at, uh, well, that's, um, what would that dangling thing be there, Jerry? Is it here? There's a bit of tinfoil hanging over where the duck is in your trout farm ponds under the nest. I guess you have problems with herons and other things wanting to eat your tasty fish. They do, they queue up. It's like an all you eat buffet if you didn't have a net. And the idea of the, um, the silver thing is to, to try and scare them. Gotcha. In the meanwhile, I didn't even say hello. Hello, this is Jerry, Governor, Crucial Cog, Media Factotum, and the man who's also in the Angus Mill video, aren't you, Jerry? Looking, I believe I am, yes. I had to say it two whole years younger. Gosh, it was sad. But it's taken me that long to get back here and actually make a proper video about what you guys do, because, well, being a rampant foodie runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> That's because Jerry knows that. Anyway, bless, there is the most wonderful source of delicious aromas here in the shape of that wood stove. But as I've written in me piece in Slingshot World magazine, which is the other reason I came here the other day, this whole place is completely fragrant um, because of the uh, the smokery. Tell us about the, the, the things that you do actually smoke out there, Governor, because there's a whole bunch of stuff, isn't it? Is it just salmon or is it trout and meat as well? Or? No, no, we, we smoke absolutely everything. We are Surrey's only now, but certainly oldest smokehouse. Really? Um, the business is 46 years old. Wow. It's been on this site for about 20 years. Um, uh -huh. We've been here, that's no, probably longer, probably 25 years. We've been here nearly 19 years. That's a good And one. we pride ourselves on smoking good old fashioned traditional fish. We grow all the, all the trout in the, in the trout farm behind you there. We buy them in very, very small, about that sort of length, inch, inch and a half in length. Yes. Feed them up and um, smoke them in here or sell them fresh but also at the video signature dish the, the smoked trout fillets yes. as a byproduct from that we make smoked trout pate yes um we've got a really good name for ourselves our smoked salmon when it comes down from Loch Duart in Scotland which is one of Scotland's only really ethical well I, I don't know arms. about many locks in Scotland but I've heard about them you would have it's, yeah. it's a fantastic lock um, and we basically cure some smoke and hand slice here on site everything from sides to slices Done the old-fashioned way. The only ingredient in our salmon is salt, which is used in the curing process, and obviously the smoke. But I will show you some oh, of that I've later. Got goosebumps and my slippery glands are just going mad. Sorry, I'm a bit, 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 bit. <laughs> literally drooling at that. And in the meanwhile, of course, just want to introduce you to the uh, the person who actually holds the deeds to the place. <laughs> this, is, Monty. this is Monty, who who actually has to fully approve it. Most customers who come in the place. I was a little bit vexed that he didn't get to at least give me a decent bark briefly, haven't you? Cause he he was... checks everybody out. He's a very good judge of character, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, right. Uh, let's, let's go and have a little look in the shop then, come and let's have a look at your wares. And, um, of course, I'd love to see that uh, that process with the salmon. That would be a problem. We will. We'll slice some salmon up and you can have a look. Oh, walk it. And I can talk lots about how fabulous it is. And you can pay <laughs> some to back that up. It hears some real yummy noises. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Okay, we're in the shop now at Tillingbourne Trout Farm and Smokery, looking at Cassie's preserves. And well, I bought some of these, I'm going to flame them and buy some more because they're delicious. As uh, explained to me by Gloria, the mama, um, that uh, these are the product of a, a chef who found the stress of servicing other people's leisure just got in his week in the end. They, they look really good. I don't think I'm going to do some serious damage to that little roaster. Meanwhile, if we zoom around a bit further, pan round and then zoom in. This is the, uh, the signature ascension. Tell us about the stuff in this here fridge, Jerry, because uh, I'm looking at the um, big chunks of uh, rather handsome looking fish in there. The, um, is that hot smoked salmon on the left? You're looking at the, the slices, yeah, that's hot smoked yeah. salmon. Um, above it and on the right is the trout, which we grow on site, smoke on site as well. Yes. That's really our signature dish. Gotcha. Um, actually, at the back of the fridge on the right hand side is some cold smoked trout. Which is done exactly like smoked salmon. <clears throat> you don't see it very often. Very rich and creamy. Lovely oh, so can you open the fridge, reach in, and just wave that at us there, Because there we go. Well, we've got to see this under. Oh, I'm onto camera there. That looks a lovely russet colour there. It's a the, lovely, uh, it's a lovely product. Whoops, uh, this is following you around there. So, how long does it take to? Uh, oh gosh, and then we've got a huge fridge full of venison looking at there. And There's some venison in there, local fallow deer. Um, and some beef, believe it or not, from uh -huh. Ewhurst. So I take it that's uh, not the average supermarket stuff, is it? Uh, Absolutely not. That's all going to be chopped up this afternoon, made into joints and steaks, and um, sent off to a farmer's market tomorrow in Wallington. Ah, uh -huh. fabulous. 
Because you, you guys do a bit of farmers marketing, don't you? We're out every single weekend. Wind, rain, snow, sun, whatever. You're but there. We're there. Awesome. Um, and the stuff in the bottom here, the uh, the bottom shelf here, this is uh, more smokery product, is it not? That's yeah, that's um, smoked pheasant, and on the left, front left, is a little bit of smoked partridge. <coughs> because we're a game dealer here, yes. we, we sell an awful lot of pheasants, partridge, rabbits, venison, you name it, we sell it, but we enhance it by smoking it, it's lovely. Gorgeous. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. It's going to get Jerry to grab individual bits out of here and uh, show us so we can have a little look. First off, show us your, your cold smoked trout there, because that's a, the stuff that's like smoked salmon, but is in fact trout, and isn't all that common at all. There we it? go. Oh, gosh, that looks so tasty. How much is a pack of that? It's about six pound a pack. It's not it's not the cheapest fish, but it's really, really good. It's um, much stronger, um, more depth of flavour than salmon. Don't get it very often, because we obviously have to grow the trout very, very big to yes. be able to dry cure them. So this is dry cured and smoked, rather than hot smoked, which yeah. is what most of our fillets are. Lovely, lovely product. Gorgeous. And you obviously get regular deliveries of shellfish as well, because I've just witnessed your vacuum packerator. Vacuum pack in this aircraft here. Oh, this is so tasty as well. The, um, where are these from? Which part of the world? Straight yes. up from New Haven, every single Thursday. Gotcha, so they're a bit Cornish rather than... Um, exactly. Boiled here. Yes. Chroma crabs are famous, but I'll take the ones in New Haven, will be a bit cleaner. They're very, very tasty. Um, you care about that kind of stuff. I know that your trout fish are incredibly tasty because I've had one. And my mate Mark Clark, who's a bit of a countryman, is able to assure me this is to do with your water quality. Because your ponds out there are spring fed, aren't they? They're spring fed, you can drink that water, absolutely. So this is our signature product, really. This is a smoke trout fillet which um, we grow on site, hot smoke and that's been brined. No other ingredients in that other than salt, a little bit of water with the brine, and obviously the fish and the smoke, that is it. Mm, that looks so good. <laughs> and then on the, um, what's that on the right hand side, the next shelf down actually, there's a whole bunch of weird stuff. Let's, uh, this is eel, smoked ooh, eel. Uh, I've read the book of eels. Don't get eel very often. One of the most expensive smoked fish that you can buy. So that Very pack creamy. of smoked eel is how much? That's 100 grams, six pound. Yeah. And the Japanese word, unagi. Once an really vital and important staple food. Mm, I can see me taking a whole load of this stuff. You're more than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Hot smoked salmon. I'll also have a little look at a bit of that as so well. That's, that's a, that's a nice big piece of salmon that's been sliced into fillets, that's been brined and hot smoked, the same as the trout. Wow. Well, Flake it up in pasta. Me Julia was going to enjoy that. She's going to love that. Absolutely, we're going to buy a bit of that. Home. And on the bottom shelf there, you have more smoked products. This is smoked pheasant. Oh, what? Mmm. Gosh. Beautiful. Absolutely lovely looking. Oh man, I'm, I'm absolutely sorry, am I crazy? And what's that on the right hand side there? That's, um, That's the mackerel, mackerel fillets. Oh, so hey, you're going to smoke fish then? People are going to want a bit of smackerel. Smoke mackerel, smackerel. That doesn't look like the supermarket stuff. It looks a whole load better. Well, it is. The supermarket stuff is not very good at all. It's, um, it's dry, it's tasteless, it's also got a colour in. You notice the colour on this is natural. Yes. It's not dyed with Tarchazine E110 to get that yellowy colour. This is natural smoke colour. Gosh, sure you can know the name of the E number. Been Tarchazine. doing it a long time. <laughs> and then just without handling, let's open this here fridge and look at these bits of deer here, dear boy. You've got some great big chunks of venison, haven't you? We have that um, local fallow dip. Just rip the door open so I can see yeah, it. So all the mentions it's uh, oh right, gotcha. here we go. So what you've got here, this is a fallow deer, there's a whole back leg of it, so we, we get the animals in in their whole primitive form. Yes. We break them down into quarters, hang them for four or five days to age them, it helps mature it. This on the left here is um, it's a bit of beef, local beef, that's all going to be rolled up, that's a rump, it does not look very good at the moment because it's not finished. No, it looks like a piece of stuff that you don't hang around in a butcher. Ah, yeah. well, exactly, and behind there's a, a bit of sirloin. But rolled up and steak this afternoon, and they're off to Wallington Farmer's Market tomorrow. Fabulous. And of course, if we just pan on round to your freezers, tuna, marlin, paddock, pangasius, that's that uh, oh, catfish, isn't it? Uh, pangasius, it's a Vietnamese river catfish. I think the supermarket is selling as um, river, cobbler. river cobbler, that's it. Yes, I'm not a fan myself. No, it's very soft, it's like a, a, a place in texture, place or sole. Very, very nice. And the back fridge, freezer over there, we saw a whole range of prawns, scallops, crevettes, snails and garlic, absolutely everything. That's game, game. So 
we hold a certain amount of frozen game as well as the fresh. Yes. People like to freeze it straight all away. Yeah, the other Christmas all year round. There's some of it being sold. Yeah. And of course, yeah. the most quaint thing of all, the fish and pot machine that takes old fashioned one quid bits and you're not going to get shot of it or change the back. Hence, you have to get the quid bits from the till and then you, you buy them. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Guys, thank you so, so much. This uh, really is a bit of a special foodie spot, but all that really remains is for us to see if we can. Uh, Get out the back and check out the salmon. Oh gosh, I've got the really spotted Gloria on camera there. She can tell me off. <laughs> okay, that's the way through to the Sanctum Sanctum. Let's go kind of have a little, a little look at the uh, point end of salmon smoking. Right, we've uh, come out back now to the food prep area here at Dillingbourne Farm and Smokery. And uh, well, Jerry, there's Mama Gloria going to show us the fine art of slicing and packing a bit of posh smoked salmon. Tell us about this gorgeous. So this is a lovely salmon that's come down from Loch Dirt in Scotland, which is one of I'm just going to trim it while I'm talking to you. Yeah, just um, it. So this is like the belly flat and fat which we're going to take off. And what I might add is not very much fat. So Loch Dirt in Scotland is one of Scottish, no, Scotland's ethical farms. Um, feed the salmon properly, the correct amount of salmon swimming in the cages. Um, no use of antibiotics, all we want these days. So we buy this salmon comes down fresh and we smoke it in the age old tradition. So what we do is basically the fillet will come in like this as a fresh piece of salmon yeah. and it will just have to be covered in salt. Yes. I'm not going to tell you the exact measurements of that. Because that's your thing. That's, that's our proprietary. Secret. That's, that's why, yes. But we basically dry cure it for a period of time, then all the salt's washed off and removed. Once that's done, it's placed in a cold smoker and we burn oak and ash. Now the reason we burn oak, oak and ash is because oak is quite harsh, uh -huh. ash is quite mild. So the combination of the two, you don't get the bitter taste that you would get with just oak. You get a lovely, a lovely flavour. Um, a couple of days in a smokehouse for a fish like this. So all we're doing here <coughs> is trimming all the fatty bits off, all the bits we don't want. Well, they make a fine smoked salmon pate, don't they? Well, not, not the fat. We, no, no. No, we only put no, premium no. salmon in our pate. Oh, right. This piece yeah, all goes in the bin. It's not like sausages, in. Yeah. They use every last piece of the beast. But, uh... So I mean, basically what happens, so that salmon's been salted now, so you're going to get an element of saltier towards the top, less saltier towards the middle. Oh, right. So traditional salmon's long slice, which means it's cut like this. My problem with that is at the top, as I said, it's saltier. Yeah. As you go down and down, it's wetter and not as salty, not as flavours. The smoke hasn't penetrated right to the core all the time. Yeah. So what we do, we adopt a decup. We're going to remove this tail at this decup angle, and all that's good for the scrambled eggs. They're going to be good scrambled eggs. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. But it's, it's the saltiest part of, of the fish. So what I've done by making that cut at that angle. That's got a decut. So now when I actually slice the salmon, I'm going from top to bottom. Right through the entire fillet. Yeah, and then we take exactly that. So then what you achieve is this. Oh, I've got a tiny bit lower down the bottom, I'll find you. Sorry, I'll, I'll go down to the table. So look, what, you, what you achieve is that. So you've got the, the saltier, crustier, smokier outside. Yeah. Right through is so you've got the best of all wells in that piece of salmon. So then what we do, we hand slice this, very skillful art I must say, oh, and I'm very good at it. You are dude. Um, He's very I, I like watching relaxing videos you're on, uh, uh, of Japanese knife masters cutting sushi and uh, knife, knife skills are a very major thing. At which point I put it in public that uh, at one point the BBC One show, imagine that my little brother, the food broadcaster, who I know you find entertaining hence I will include him in a blessing. So but they, they thought he had knife skills, and unfortunately he didn't. And, and they had him attempt to cut up a bit of poultry. And when they came back live, the chef had cut up the duck, and the goose he had to cut up was kind of destroyed. That's so knife that. skills are no, they're a really important big thing. I'm, I'm not too bad, but dude, you're. So while we're talking about dead. knife skills, I made a hash about the cup before last there. Ah, that's really? That was not a problem because that's yes. what we put in our pates. We don't put any fats or any bits and bobs, bobs, uh -huh. bits and bobs in it. It's just pure slices. So when we get up to the head end, that bit there's quite awkward to cut. Yes. So therefore that, that will end up in the pate. But it's lovely and thin. That is the thinner you can get it, the better. Would you like to taste some? 
I've been thinking kind of just thievery thoughts about that discarded thing. There's a big hand come out in a minute and steal that. There you go. Look at that. This camera camera focus, baby. Let's do a bit of 4K focusing just on the salmon. Snap into focus. It doesn't want to know. Do you know I can't be? I can't bear to wax. I'm gonna. Oh my god. So mm. by doing it like this, you can have as a customer anything you require in the way of salmon. You can have a whole side unsliced if you <coughs> can do this. And I hope by watching this you can see how easy it actually is to do. Um, you can have a whole side sliced and put back on the side, or as you can see, we're packing it now in these lovely 100 gram packets. You can have 200 okay. gram packets, 500 gram packets, whatever you wish. We only give it a shelf life of 10 days because that's what our EHO guidelines and regulations state. Mate, nobody alive wants to taste of this could keep a pack of this for more than a day. That's absolutely delicious. I'm such a fan of smoked salmon. I've, uh, I've been a bit of a fanboy of certain other smoke houses. I've been to buy it at Selfridges. I worked in a place called The Smoke House, which was an old recording studio. I have a bit of Yiddish history. That is as good as any smoked salmon I have tasted in my entire life. That is absolutely meltingly delicious. Thank you. And the depth of flavours. Oh, God. I can't tell you that I haven't eaten today. But you can guess where I spent actually. most of my life in a weeks running up to Christmas and that's smoking here, and slicing here, salmon on this table slicing fish slicing fish <laughs> like crazy to the point where it's hey it makes you feel good because it's all part of the income for the business but my gosh it's uh, it's a lot of work it's sadly so, it's, so a, it's a tradition which is, is dying out we, we are well, there's, just, there's a few there's just a few about we've got a and they tend to make a sort of big fuss and be famous but hell I'm not naming their brand in your video but uh, absolutely not no, 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 but my gosh, this is as good as the finest dinner. In fact, I would suggest that if you really do care about food miles, artisanal type approach and you're a raving foodie, then you're, you cannot do any better. And of course, here in Surrey, this is a place people can come and buy their food stuff and then brag about it and show off while they're serving their mates. I've got a little surprise for you, Adam. Yes? It is in the smokehouse behind me, or our hot smokehouse, I should say. Mm -hmm. We've got some smoked eels, or some eels smoking. Oh, wow. So if you'd like to come and have a look. Definitely. More than welcome. Yes. I've, I've read a book called The Book of Eels. The cover looks like The Book of Kells. It's a, it's a bit massively important fish. It's a, it's a huge, huge socio-economic importance. And also, the smoke deal is... Tragic is, reduction uh, in the numbers. So, so expensive because of Because this. of that reduction in the numbers that isn't us and isn't predation. They're not sure if it's the ocean currents. You were explained to me that um, you two are knowledge was heck about the eel and that they reckon only a percent, single percent point of all the elvers and glass eels hatched in Sargasso ever get to attempt to come up our rivers. Exactly right, and yeah. those numbers themselves are reduced by 99%, literally almost to nothing, which is why the otters are eating everything else. Because if you're an otter, you want to eat eel. My gosh, it's a tasty thing. The Japanese adore unagi. And uh, it's the only cooked sushi, isn't it, unagi? Japanese. I believe so, yeah. Teriyaki or something they cook with it. Oh, that's, uh, that's all sorts of but we do all sorts of clever things like that with our salmon as well. We, we, we did some yeah, we did some Arctic char the other day actually. Oh, really? And um, we, in the brine, which is salt and water, we put some uh, teriyaki sauce, some soy, some things like that, put some sweetness Ooh. in it. Yeah. A very gentle texture and gentle flavour of the fish and it enhanced it beautifully. Um, we also do, with the salmon here, we sometimes cure it with beetroot. So we oh, I've some, seen that as yeah, a thing, isn't it? That is definitely a thing because apart from us, it's... We get some sliced, cooked sliced beetroot and lay it on top of the fish yes. during the curing process and it gives it a lovely deep red Purple, round that bit there. Cool. So as you can see, I'm only nearly halfway through yes. this side of salmon now. Absolutely beautiful. It's like one of those how it's made videos. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll leave Jerry and Gloria slicing and packing up this delicious smoked salmon here and just remains to say an enormous thank you to Tillingwall Trout Farm and um, well, what's your website, Jerry? It is www.tillingbornfarm.com. And uh, you're here on the A25, just outside of, um, what's the place of the station? It's between Dorking and Guildford. That's it. And the, the, what's that, go, 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 what's the little town just up the street there with the station? Gomshaw. Gomshaw, Gomshaw, that's it, yes. If you find Gomshaw, you'll find the Tillingborn Trout Farm. But uh, come along, come and catch a trout. You can even barbecue it outdoors.
That's right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much, guys. Cheers. We've come right out the back to your um, well, your hot smoker, Jerry. This is this is our hot smoker, and in here now, currently, we have some eel. Mm. Um, smoked eels are delicious, delicious delicacy, absolutely beautiful. You can see this is about halfway through the smoking process now. They're all so, starting to ooze. Yeah, so these eels, eels are only as, ever as good as their fat content. Yes. They get a good fat eel, which is what these are. These all come down from uh, a friend of mine actually in London, who is one of the country's biggest jelly eel producers. Gotcha. So, so the he's eels, one of the last eel traders around. Yeah, absolutely. And he supplies most of the, the major supermarkets with jelly eel. Gotcha. But these eels are too big for him to jelly. So they've got big chunks so yeah, they come to you to be so smoked. We, we take those, as you can see, look at the size of that one. We brine them and do all our magic with it, put it in the smoker on natural local charcoal and this is an ash and oak dust mixture which we sprinkle on top. So what we're doing, we're getting the heat and the smoke. Press your smell vision button at the now. Same time. Oh mate, this is a piece of what fragrances this whole premise is, isn't it? So, these will be, as you see now where I'm pushing down, yeah. you're getting that nice squishy feel, that's where all the oils are all moving and relaxing mm. and, and the smoke's flavouring. Every now and again we turn them over, let me get one out and show you, get a nice, so say halfway through the smoking process now, that will all go lovely golden yellow, and yellow I might add from smoke, not yes. dyes and colours and whole natural flavours and all yes. that sort of, artificial flavours I should say, this is totally, totally natural, as primitive as you can get. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how it's made. <laughs> Jerry, that is again just making me so hungry. I did a bit of filming once at a tractor pull in Sweden, and I can tell you that the most important Ooh. snack for those guys is a smoked eel. Right, so uh, we've just come into the butchery here, and um, well, take one had rather a lot of big, big saw noises because um, there's a bone in the middle of that. What is that cut there? I think I know what it is. But, uh, that is a piece of sirloin of, 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 of beef. And, uh, and those skills are why you had John Sharp on the knife for the smoked salmon slicing, aren't they? I do most things perfectly, but knife sharpening is not my forte. Perhaps. You could just tell that was John it. is very good at it. Truly. <coughs> so tell us about the origin of this here beef, because this is uh, not just a bit of supermarket mm -hmm. moo, is it? No, this is a piece of local beef. It was um, born and bred in Ewhurst, which is as a crow flies, probably, I don't know, three or four miles up the road from here. Um, so we moved months. into recently, we mostly did venison and pheasants and partridge and rabbits. But yes. There's a big market for proper proper meat, locally sourced meat. And a good thing about it, that stamp you can see on the back of the animal there, yep. you just point that out. Uh, how do you have or how do you yeah, do? understand. That will say 6060, and that is our local laboratory, which means yes. it's not come from Norfolk or Brighton or anywhere else in the country, it's come from here. Um, lovely, lovely meat, we've aged it a little bit. Um, this is all gonna be, what John's doing now is taking the bone and you can see here what you would know as a sirloin steak. Yes. So you cut it that way and make the sirloin steaks out of it. What John's going to do in a minute is roll that as a piece of sirloin roasting beef. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. We also grow our own lamb on site. Over here you'll see we packed all this up ready for market tomorrow. This is going to Wallington Farmers Market. That's a whole shoulder of lamb. Our lamb grazed in the fields right behind you, Adam. Yes, with them. Um, with Larry the Lama. With Larry the Lama <laughs> as their daddy, just to look after them, yes. And this here, interestingly, is what we call it's, it's sheep, but we, it's known as mutton. So this yes. is over two year old. Um, a tougher, slightly tougher bit of meat, much more flavour. You slow cook it, and you'll get a, a nicer nicer flavour. That's, that's, that's a it. sort of nouveau foody yeah. thing. It was yeah. all lamb, and then there's some. Um, Mutton, what's the other? The other well, hoggit between hoggit. the two, isn't there? Yes, yeah. hoggit, that was it. I knew there was another classification, which... Uh... That's it, it's all butchered and packed in here. That's a nice Barnsley chop. Barnsley chop being the, um, straight through the entire saddle, I take it, there. Exactly that. Oh, tasty. The racks have gone, they such in the sun coming this morning. That was the first thing that went. But no, local meat is all about providence, food, miles and quality these days. All the animals we butcher here are yes. grass-fed. Um, no antibiotics, no chemicals. Wow. Very, very important in this day and age. I think John just about got rid of that. Yeah, Tilling board, trout farm and smokery. Also uh, high-end, foodie, low food miles, utter provenance, British beef. And of course the lamb that they grow on site as well. 
Oh mate, what a spot. All you need is to uh, get a tame baker to come around your gaff every morning. <laughs> no, that's a different thing. Wow, it does look rather superb. There it goes, being rolled up. That's going to be one heck of a roast. Mm, how many people could sit down to that? You're going to cut it into more than one chunk, you think? Oh, I, could be, I could probably cope with that myself. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's a big one, isn't it? That's got to be 10 people, isn't it? That's yeah, got to be. Big old roast. But everybody you know, associates sirloin with steaks, but no, it's a lovely, lovely roasting meat. There's that magical butcher's knot. I got taught that. I'm totally going to have it. Did you? Yeah. My first job at Dirty Test was about butcher's dividend spirit. <sighs> That's enough of this, though. Tillingbourne Trout Farm and smokery. And, of course, fine quality meat.